the 50 plus in Montgomery County, a monthly program that is a voice for many, produced by the Commission on Aging, of which I am a community member. This show is insightful for people of all ages, and each episode takes a fresh look at important issues by spotlighting older adults in the community, representatives of services and programs, and activities of interest to older adults. My name is Katie Smith. On this month's show, we're going to talk about life transitions. Whether anticipated or not, a major transition will happen. We're going to learn about ways to thrive during and after big transitions, such as gathering information, determining your needs, and talking through various scenarios as you plan for your next stage of life. On that note, the Commission on Aging developed a planning toolkit with resources and a worksheet to help people plan for life transitions as we age. We're gonna discuss this new material today. And here to talk with us about it is Marsha Prusan and Marsha Weber. Hi, Marsha and Marsha. Hi, Katie. I must say that Marsha Prusan has had a long career in health communications with a strong focus on aging, primarily with the National Institute on Aging at NIH and Center for Disease Control and Prevention. She's also worked on education campaigns for health professionals and for public issues such as cancer prevention, adult immunization, Alzheimer's disease, and traumatic brain injury. She has recently retired as a program manager for Age Friendly Montgomery, part of an AARP World Health Organization effort to help communities prepare for the aging population across the globe. She has also participated over the past 18 years with the County's Commission on Aging, which sponsors this program. Marsha Weber, She's had a career as a psychotherapist in private practice. She's a board member of Greater Only Rise. Also, she's a commissioner with the Montgomery County Commission on Aging and the past co-chair of the Health and Wellness Committee. She's a longtime advocate for senior residents of Montgomery County as well. Well, let's jump right in, ladies. Tell us about the new toolkit, planning for life transitions as we age. Well, I'll start and tell you that the Commission on Aging thought it was really important to help people focus on their futures. And of course, none of us knows what is going to occur in our future. So it this is a way to help people think about what is important to them, what they would like to have happen as they get older or run into medical or other difficulties, and uh, who would help them through that process. So this kit was planned as a way to help you organize all of that information, um, think, think about things like housing, health, finances, medical, uh, you know, how you want to plan out for your future um, and uh, and who you would like to trust that information with. Marsha Weber, you want to? Yeah, I did. I wanted to add that, you know, you may find that there's a lot of material that talks about this issue in different ways. What we wanted to do is bring it home. We wanted to make it so that it was more um, usable to those in the county. So we've included resources on every topic that we talked about where you can access further information on your needs. Now, can you tell us what are the benefits of planning for life transitions and changes? I think there are several, certainly one of them, one of the most important ones is to ensure that what you want, your wishes are shared and known to those people that you care about and who will be carrying out those wishes. You also get to decide how you want to be cared for. You can make those requests, what your preferences are, and I think also making it easier on the people that will be involved in that process, whether that be family, relatives, children, whoever it is that you choose. We always like to say that there's no planning in the middle of a crisis. It's much better to plan ahead. That's so true. You know, change is hard and it's even harder to talk about the things that we cannot control such as a crisis, as you mentioned, Marcia, talk to us about what a life transition actually is. It may be, a, a it's often a life-changing event, but it could be something as serious as the death of a spouse or, or your own illness, a fall, uh, a retirement, a change in housing needs, some other unexpected events that you, you hadn't anticipated. Anything that's gonna alter the way your life is going. That whatever you've been doing needs adjustments or changes. So it's a way to address that. Considering those changes, why are life transitions so hard? It's a great question. 
I think we human beings tend to resist doing things that are difficult and doing things that require change. I mean, the reality is, you know, we like what's familiar. We like to be comfortable. So if we're in a housing situation, for example, that we've been in for years, it's difficult to let go. It's difficult to want to move on. Marcia, you want to add some things? Well, I think it also can be overwhelming. Uh, when you, uh, some of us talk about, oh, we need to, you know, get rid of things in our house. We have too much stuff in our house. How do we do that? And we don't do it because it's so overwhelming. We just don't do it. And this could possibly uh, feel that way if you don't know have a process for doing it, getting your information in order for someone else. But this toolkit does provide a way to help you organize see what you might need to get together and organize it for someone. And so in effect, this really makes it easier. But it's hard and, and you know, you have memories, you may have gone through a grief process, you just wanna stay independent and do things the way you always have. Um, and also sometimes, and in some cultures, it's difficult to talk about these. Some of us find it hard to approach our children about these topics. Um, some children don't wanna talk about it. And in some families, it's just not appropriate. They don't feel it's appropriate to talk about these things with their children. So all of those things make it can be can make conversation difficult. Yeah, I would add too when Marsha mentions, mentions independence. I think it's probably true for most seniors. You know, they want to maintain their own independence as long as they can. They want to be someplace where they can feel safe and secure. And this toolkit is a way of helping you resolve some questions that might help you do exactly that. Now, who should be involved in the planning with you? It's just someone you know and trust. And who might that be? It might be a child. It might be a best friend. It might be someone you work with professionally, but someone that you trust and are comfortable, uh, a, a relative that you're comfortable sharing, uh, you know, important and private information with. And I think, too, that that person for you, as you may review who that might be, is someone that you believe will carry on your wishes, someone you can trust that will do what you're asking to be done. Now, we've learned the benefits. We understand that it's hard. Um, but when should someone actually start the planning? At what age? <laughs> I was just going to say it. Any, it's, it's, you know, again, as Marcia mentioned, and you know, Katie, our focus is on the 50 plus population, but you can start this at any age. There's no is if you have something or wishes or anything that's meaningful to you that you want to make sure some hor if some horrible thing happened would be taken care of, then that's the time. Now, what should you decide before you start the conversation with someone you trust? Well, well, first you have to decide who it is you feel you can trust, share this information with. And secondly, of course, you have to decide which pieces of information that person needs to know. Uh, and uh, this toolkit has a, uh, in the back, we'll talk about it later probably, but it has a very extensive worksheet. And that will help you think about, do I have that piece of paper, that piece of paper, where is it? How do I locate it? That kind of thing. So that's that's that will help you decide what you need to to start thinking about and organize it. Well, now that we've determined the who, is there a best time to start the conversation? Again, I think as soon as possible, as whenever it seems right. I mean, you know, the conversation can be had in stages too. I mean, you can broach it with the people that are significant just to kind of break the ice. And so it may take just a period of time to move forward and eventually begin to use this toolkit. Mm -hmm. That gets into the next question, the how. How will we start uh, the conversation? What are some examples of that? Well, you have to be sensitive in how you approach this person and know that person and how that person might react. But we and we give examples in the toolkit of conversation starters that might help you get it going. But some of them might be, I have something important I want to share with you. Um, and this, what I want to share with you is going to give me peace of mind and I hope it will reduce the burden on you later on and ease your peace of mind as well and how and how we're going to walk through later life together. So um, it's also a chance for you to ask me questions 
about what you would like to know that perhaps I haven't told you today. I, I think too, we, we get back to the concept of no crisis, no planning in crisis. Now is not the time to start the conversation, not when you're in the middle of a crisis, when there are too many other issues, unknowns, too many emotions, too much going on. It's far better to do it ahead of any possible crisis so that you can have a conversation that's more meaningful. Can I turn with the conversation? Okay, we know the who, we know the when, we know the how, but is this conversation ongoing? Absolutely. Things change over time. Uh, and you have to, of course, be c continually in touch with whoever it is you're sharing this information with. And you have to be looking over the information you've collected to make sure it stays up to date. It might change. You might change a doctor. You might change your location. You might, uh, I, I, just anything could change. Your, your health condition could change. So uh, it's important to keep at looking at it every every year or so. And take a look at it and make sure it's up to date. Yeah, and, and it sure would be a Sorry, it wouldn't no, be a good. bad idea to do it when you change your, you know, your your um, fire alarm, right? When if, right, if, good idea. Anything that you do that that requires updating, that can all be done at the same time, and that's the best way to do it. It becomes easier to do, I think, when it's familiar. It gets more comfortable. You see the benefits of it, and it just reinforces itself. That's a good tip to couple it with other reminders and updates that we continuously do. Now, the Commission on Aging's toolkit contains fact sheets and resources about housing, health care, and legal and financial issues. Let's talk a little bit about each of them. What about housing? Housing is real, real important. One of the questions that comes up is, again, if we're talking about transitions in life, maybe there's an illness, maybe there's an accident, maybe there's a fall. Where you're living now, is that where you want to stay? Do you have options? Do you stay? Do you go? How do I stay where I am safely? If I do go, where do I go? What kind of places are available to me? So all those questions are viable. And again, what we've chosen to do is to add resources so you can begin to explore that. Now, what does one need to know about taking charge of their health care? Well, just keeping good records so that you know everything about your health insurance, your, your end of life choices, uh, uh, where your medical records are kept, who your doctor is, how to contact that person, just anything pertaining to your health. Uh, and certainly your health insurance uh, information needs to be available for somebody who's trying to help you out. And it's never a bad idea to have a current list of your medications. Yes, and a list of medication. Good idea. Now, the final one is legal and financial matters. What about those? You know, one of the things that comes up, and a lot of times I've heard this with people, well, you know, I don't have a lot, I don't have a lot of money, why do I need a will? A will is not something that's just related to finances. A will is also a way, as we talked, so much of this, this toolkit is making your wishes known. What if you have something really valuable to you? You know, a piece of art, um, some family heirloom. You want it to go to someone in particular, this is a great place to be able to delineate who that is. One of the things you always want to do is try to avoid conflict, right? Which happens a lot of times, um, and again, in a crisis. So this is a way to have something set aside and prepared so that those issues don't pop up. And you want to have information about where all of your financial uh, business takes place and who's, who's in control of that and legal documents and even things like military records. Uh, there's just a lot of any, any form that's going to be relevant to your life, you, you need to have organized for someone to, to help you with. Marcia, it's interesting that you mentioned conflict. And I too, I think a will is really good to have you to strengthen those family bonds and to keep peace even after someone has actually transitioned so that family members stay connected. That's that's really smart. Now I've had an opportunity to take a look at the Commission on Aging's toolkit and I even find it helpful for myself in my own life. It contains an organizing worksheet uh, that covers many of the things that you've already discussed, but I want you to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, it's a very broad, it's it's actually, it's so broad, it's on double sheets, right? Because there's so much that we try to cover. Um, it's a it's a way to, things that we don't think about, right? It's like passwords or or phone numbers or account numbers or all kinds of different items that again, 
it's a way to focus your attention and have the information available for yourself and anyone else that you trust to have it. And and every item on that list will not pertain to every person. So there may be big spaces that if you start filling it out, you leave empty, but that's fine. But it makes you think about things that maybe you hadn't thought about before, about including them in, in, in your record keeping. And there are things that, you know, that come up in your life that are, that we haven't addressed. And so there's a good place to put it there too. Well, let's dive a little bit deeper into the toolkit. It's a broad checklist of information. Um, can you tell us some of the specifics that are included? I'm going to try and give you some specifics actually on the on the worksheet, which I, I think is really valuable. And, and most people who look at this information, this whole toolkit, see the value in this. The, the worksheet is actually, it's double pages, so it's wide, and it's on both sides. And there's a lot of room to write in. It has a list of all the kinds of information related to each one of the topics. And it's broken down into four particular um, areas. One is general information, which would include, you know, driver's license, 4OK number, birth certificates, marriage certificates, general information about who you are. And uh, then it has a section on medical health insurance information, account numbers, doctor's numbers, relatives, you know, that kind of thing, anything that's going to be related to your insurance. The third one is financial information. That's going to have um, bank numbers, checking account numbers. If you have a financial advisor, or if you don't, uh, savings bonds, checking account numbers, anything related to finances. And the last one is recurring payments. You know, as long as we're alive, we're going to get bills. So where is the information about where that is? So it's going to be, you know, a cell phone, a landline, utility, anything, car payments, mortgage payments, rent payments, anything that you do on a monthly basis. So we tried to cover a clear area so that someone can look at this and have a real good sense of where you stand in relationship to this information in your life. Hmm. That sounds like a, an exhaustive list and nothing was was left out, but it's a good place to keep all of your important information, at least a start for most people. Absolutely. So overall, we've really learned that, you know, transitions can be anticipated or unanticipated, but they're definitely going to happen at some point. We, we don't want to plan, you know, during a crisis. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us that perhaps we haven't covered already? Just kind of an overall is, you know, thank you again for letting us do this, because what we want to do is raise the awareness, we try to make it easier. What what can be done in life to make it easier so that, you know, whatever is going on or whoever it is that's dealing with it, you with it, excuse me, has a has some familiarity. So it won't be a struggle. Yes, it's just a it's a way to make planning easier. Yes. Mm -hmm. I do have one bonus question. Um, how can someone access this document? Would they go to the um, COA's website? Where can they find it? Right now, it's at this moment, it's being, I don't know how long it will be there right now. It's highlighted on the senior website and you can find it on the Montgomery County Commission on Aging's website under helpful resources. Thank you so much for that. Well, I must say, I really, go ahead, Marcia. I'm sorry, Katie, I was just going to say also, there's the uh, Aging and Disability Resource Center. Um, so 240-777-3000. Katie, I bet you've mentioned that number a few times. It's a valuable resource in the county for aging and disability. So one more time, right? 240-777-3000. Give them a call. Oh, yes. Um, and since we have talked about this document, I am curious, have either one of y'all had a success story, success story, excuse me, with respect to um, transition planning? Or have you already started that yourself? We certainly have in our family, and we've been doing it for many, many years. And uh, I update the thing every couple of years as things change. And I think our kids really, appreciate. I don't, I hand it to them. I don't email it to them uh, so that they aren't, it's not out there in cyberspace and uh, they, they really appreciate it. Hmm. Well, I must say I've enjoyed this conversation and thank you both for coming on and sharing. Thank you. It's been great, Katie. Thanks again for the opportunity. Thanks for having us, Katie. 
Absolutely. Anytime. Well, that concludes our program for today. As you can see, the voices of those 50 plus matter every day and in every way. To learn more about services for seniors in Montgomery County, please visit the Montgomery County Seniors website by visiting montgomerycountymd.gov slash seniors or call the Senior Resource Line at 240-777-3000. And as always, thank you for watching 50 Plus in Montgomery County.